Hello Grade 12s, welcome to today's lesson. It's Economics with Ms. Piwe and today we're going to be looking at protectionism. In our previous lesson we looked at free trade but I did bring in protectionism so that we have a better understanding of how the two concepts actually um, inter or are interrelated or interact with one another. So in this lesson, we are going to be focusing on protectionism. We're going to be looking at arguments for and against uh, by different um, economists. So let's get started. Uh, we know that there's a race um, between um, different countries because they want to um, grow their economy or they want to grow their economy and also they want to grow um, their wealth. So countries have to um, try and protect um, their local suppliers and encourage um, citizens of their own or of that particular country to use um, local suppliers rather than using um, the international um, suppliers. So it's best to supply local products um, instead of uh, buying international brands. So what does protection mean? So protection, um, based on what many economists um, say, so many economists argue for protection, especially for developing countries. So we know that uh, most people um, living in developing countries support uh, the protectionism uh, because they do encourage uh, the fact that local citizens should um, support local suppliers. But many other economists insist that free trade um, is the best way to regulate markets. Um, obviously, that's a, an argument that exists, um, and also it makes a nice class discussion, um, or you can have a discussion with your friends. Um, some can support protectionism, and others can support um, free trade, so that you can have um, different arguments and opinions relating to that. So in this lesson, we will be focusing on protection, and we're going to be looking as to why many developing countries support uh, protection or protectionism, and also what is the reasoning uh, behind um, some of the economists thinking that free trade is the best way to regulate um, the markets. So we know that governments often choose a mix of um, selected uh, protectionist and free trade policies. So governments actually prefer a mix of these two um, that suit um, their particular conditions in their country um, as, as such, because we know that countries are very different uh, to each other and what works in one particular country um, does not necessarily mean that it would work in another country. So governments um, have to make those important choices and in most cases governments actually choose a mix of selected protectionist and free trade policies um, that would suit uh, the needs and the conditions of their country. Okay, so let's go back there. So let's have a look at the definition of protection. So what does it mean? So this is a trade policy, so you need to be aware that it is a policy whereby the state discourages um, the importing of certain goods and services in order to protect the local industries against unequal competition from abroad. Okay, so this is a policy that would be put in place by government in order to discourage importing um, or the importing of certain goods and services in order to protect the local industries against the unequal um, competition from abroad. Because here government is trying to uh, promote local suppliers and then also they want to see more products being manufactured locally so that they can increase the, the domestic production as well. So in order to achieve this uh, or to achieve these objectives, government has to put um, these programs in place um, in order to support and promote local suppliers. So we know that protection is a trade policy, be aware of that. And what does it do? It discourages um, the importing of certain goods and services um, in order to protect the local um, businesses or industries against unequal competition from abroad. So what are the arguments in favor 
um, of protection. So the first point that we're going to discuss is the industrial development. So some developing countries are well suited uh, to establishing certain kinds of industries. So free trade makes it difficult for these countries to compete with countries with well-established um, industries. So there is an opportunity uh, in a lot of developing countries to establish um, certain industries or certain kinds of industries. Uh, but with free trade, it makes it difficult for these countries to compete um, against industries that are well-established. And most of these well-established industries are found in developing countries. Countries. So it brings in a huge um, disadvantage uh, to the developing countries because they can't enter into those markets because they are dealing with um, industries that are well established and um, that most of them come from developed countries. So the industrial development is somehow limited uh, through free trade, uh, but if government chooses to use protection, so therefore government will have a policy in place to support local manufacturers in order to achieve this. And then the second point is the infant um, industries. These are newly established industries um, which find themselves or find it difficult to survive because of high average costs of production which are higher than those of well-established foreign competitors. So it's, an, it's a good thing to, only, to always have a part in newly um, developed industries or businesses, uh, but these newly developed um, businesses find it difficult to survive uh, because of the high average costs of production. So if the costs of production are high, it makes it very difficult for local manufacturers uh, to produce uh, the required volumes because they don't have the financial resources nor the capacity in order to meet those, de um, to meet those demands. So it is a huge challenge um, that a lot of businesses find themselves in, uh, particularly when they are just starting up, that they have to deal with a huge challenge of high average costs in production. Um, stable wage levels and higher standards of living. So a country with high wages has a view that the standard of living will be undermined if cheaper goods are imported uh, from countries with low wages. Okay, So we've had this discussion um, uh, previously when we spoke of China and uh, the whole issue with uh, child labor and cheap labor that um, goes on in that country. So then we associate that um, low wage with the standard of the products and services that they uh, produce in that country. So if we are a country that has high wages and a high standard of living, we are going to undermine the cheaper goods because we think the fact that they've been locally uh, manufactured, that doesn't help uh, because um, we think that quality has been compromised and therefore we would not want to purchase um, those goods and services. So it's important um, that we are aware of that. So here we're dealing with countries um, with high wages and also there's a, a high standard of living um, in those countries. So they will undermine the cheaper goods which are important from countries with low wages. And China um, will be a good example of this, um, that we have this perception uh, that uh, they don't produce uh, quality goods because of the um, uh, uh, labor that they use. They um, employ um, children um, and also uh, people work for long hours and they are not compensated accordingly. Also, the protection of job opportunities. If local industries cannot find it profitable uh, or can, cannot find profitable markets uh, because of cheaper imports, uh, production may decrease and this will lead to more unemployment. Um, and we know that if a country is going through a difficult um, economic climate, um, sometimes it is people do consider the option of purchasing um, the cheaper imports uh, rather than buying the actual um, quality product from local suppliers because um, their disposable income has been compromised. So they would rather save and, and have a, a, a budget that would last them longer 
uh, by purchasing um, the uh, cheaper imports that have been brought in uh, from um, other countries. So what does this do? So this will decrease the, will decrease the production and will also lead to more unemployment uh, because now we are relying on the cheaper imports um, that have been brought into the country. And we know with um, clothing items, uh, a lot of factories that uh, used to manufacture clothing have been closed down uh, because of the cheaper imports um, that have been brought in from other countries. And when you close down those factories, it's going to lead uh, to more unemployment uh, because the people that worked in those factories will find themselves without jobs and therefore they will fall under the unemployment category uh, which is um, currently sitting at plus minus 26 um, percent. Okay, moving right along. So another factor that we need to consider is the economic self-sufficiency and strategic key industries. So in, in, in in times of conflict, cutoff, and friction uh, between countries um, occur. So, um, so in times there is conflict, um, there are cutoffs or there are frictions that happen um, between countries. So protection should be granted, um, especially to key industries, to ensure that the availability um, of these key product is not interrupted. Okay. So it does happen that you know there is tension between. Um, um, two countries um, and therefore their economic um, uh, activities could be compromised or economic relations. Um, so protection needs to be put into place to ensure that um, the key industries continue to make products available um, during this difficult time that the countries could possibly be facing. And then also there are issues around the dangers of dumping. Um, some countries sell their surplus goods in a foreign country at lower prices than it costs them to produce um, the goods. Um, local producers cannot compete and their factories may close down. So this is a big problem um, for many countries uh, where you have countries that have a surplus of goods um, that they are now wanting to sell to other countries at a very low price. So it's a lower price than it costs them to produce um, those goods. So local suppliers find it very difficult to compete with this because, I mean, if, 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 if a product that costs five rand um, is now sold at, at one rand and you are selling it at four rand, people are going to go for the cheaper um, price because they are trying to save um, so that they can also buy other consumer goods uh, that they may be wanting to um, spend their money on. So you are going to find yourself uh, sitting at a huge um, disadvantage as a company uh, and sometimes factories have closed down uh, because they can't keep up with the dumping that's happening. Okay, So government needs to put in certain measures um, in order to protect the local suppliers when it comes to dangers um, such as dumping. Stabilize the exchange rates and the balance of payments. So traders buy in the cheapest markets and sell in the most expensive ones. Countries export primary products and import manufactured goods, causing um, disrupted balance of payments and the exchange rate. Okay, so here's this trend that I want to talk about that countries actually will buy from the cheapest market. So I'm going to bring this up. Okay, so countries will buy from the cheapest um, markets but sell in the most expensive markets. Okay, so countries export primary products and then they import um, the manufactured goods, uh, causing uh, the balance of payments uh, to be disrupted and also the exchange rates to be disrupted as well. And it's, it's happened, you know, you travel overseas and you see an item that you've seen at one of the exclusive shopping centers and it's probably now being sold triple the price of what it was bought for uh, from the international market. So um, businesses do this where they buy from the cheapest markets and then they sell the items in the most expensive markets. So you will think, oh my goodness, um, I spent 20,000 rent buying this particular product, where else uh, when you go to a place where it's manufactured, um, you are paying what, uh, a thousand rand for it. 
Um, so you, you feel that you know, you've been uh, 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 taken advantage of because you know, and now you are paying you know, uh, a, a huge amount for this product that is actually um, sold um, at, at a very cheap price in its local market. So those are the challenges that uh, consumers have to deal with on a daily basis. And, and it's important to be aware of these um, challenges and the fact that they do exist. So, and then also we need to look at the protection of the natural resources, which is very important uh, because we have limited resources. So government needs to ensure that our natural, natural resources are being protected and they are not being exploited. And it's important that we, we do have uh, protection measures around our natural resources. So free trade can easily exhaust natural resources uh, and therefore protection is needed to protect the local industries and the indigenous knowledge systems um, so that they can survive. The South African government has taken steps to protect um, the rooibos tea as a natural resource and safeguard indigenous knowledge that allows for the hudia plant uh, to be used for medicinal uh, purposes. Okay, So we know that our government has has good policies in place when it comes to protecting our natural um, environment. And um, rooibos tea is something which is considered to be our natural um, environment and government has put in uh, protection measures in place in order to safeguard our indigenous knowledge as well when it comes to using our plants uh, for medicinal uh, purposes. So without protectionism, if you are working on a free trade system where there are few barriers that are put in place in the market, then you know our natural res uh, resources will be exhausted uh, by the fact that you know people can just consume them, use them, exploit them um, as they wish. But if there are protection measures in place, people will not be in a position to exploit and to, to exhaust our natural resources and also we can safeguard our indigenous knowledge um, so that we can pass it on to future generations. Well, we're going to take a short break and I will catch you right after this.